Happy Valentine's Day, my crafty friend, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's very special video. A video where I will be flipping through the most beautiful Valentine I have ever received in my entire life, as well as the gorgeous, already filled up with just beautiful things, swap journal that my dear friend May has decorated for me. I call her my crafty best friend. She inspires me so much to create and has just brought so much love into my life. I can't even tell you in words how much she means to me and I've, I've never even met her in person, but she's just one of those people. You can absolutely feel the love she puts into her crafts. You can feel the joy, the enthusiasm. You can tell how much she just treasures the materials that she uses and her whimsical flair for putting things together and collaging is just unmatched. She's my favorite collage artist and she spoils me rotten with the most unbelievable gifts, truly. And so May, thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy Valentine's Day to you. I love you so much. And all of you who are watching, prepare to be amazed by not only the beauty of what she did, but the speed at which she crafts these things. She received this journal from me empty with a request to fill it up with cool stuff, just as she sent me a blank journal last year that I filled up with cool stuff and sent back to her. She sent me a blank swap book. Boy, it must have been spring, early spring of 2023. And I worked on it and added to it and wrote a big long letter. It must have taken me until January of this year. I can't even do the math, but it took me many, many months to fill up a swap journal. So I thought I had sent May something that I wouldn't see back again for a very long time. And she just blew my mind by getting it in the mail again like a week later, barely, not even, maybe not even a week later. Anyway, you can see how this book looked in its original state before May filled it up in a video. I'll put the link in, a vi in the video description here if you're curious, or just go to my channel and look at my uploads, it's there. But yeah, she added this unbelievable embroidered medallion to the back that's just may did you do this by the way if you made this i will be just so shocked and amazed it's super super cool whether she made it or not it's it's just so visually stunning and i love the way that she's layered it with the embroidered peacock feather and this cool textured sort of stuff the background fabric is a fabric from her very first happy mail to me. That's why I used it for the cover. She's added little book corners. So cool. And she collaged the front with just the prettiest little peacock applique. And by the way, every time I make something to send back to me, I am looking for original cool little peacock things to include because she loves peacocks. So do I. Maybe it's our thing. Um, so if you have any cool little peacocks that you think I need to put into a book for May, let me know. I'm accepting peacocks for May and that's what I'll use them for. And so anyway, yes, yeah, so cute M for May. I would love to know what kind of a drink that came from. She makes the most beautiful clusters of things in her tassels. I love these. I'm going to definitely use them. And I love the way she made a tassel using fabric strips. I'm going to copy that idea and do the same thing for her with the book I'm making for her next. So yeah, customs agents opened the package and went through it for the very first time uh, in my package receiving life. So Sadly, it did not have the presentation that I know May would have given it. Um, and so I've put things back how I think they're supposed to go, but this book was untied, open. Um, this ring was kind of loose in it, so I figured maybe she <laughs> tied it to there the way I always do a ring with my journals. It's so cool. Look at this big, giant, maybe I'll put it on 
this finger. Yeah, that feels right. It, and you know what, though? It hides my eye light, so I'll put it on this one. <laughs> May, it's so over the top. She knows me so well. She knows I'd get a kick out of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, this is how she decorated the book. She stuffed this pocket with a beautiful few pages out of a cool magazine, 3rd February 1977. How gorgeous is this woman in yellow? I love that. Absolutely love it. Cool contortionist. I would love to learn to do this, by the way. I get all kinds of ads pop up on my YouTube uh, feed uh, trying to get me to sign up for all kinds of different Pilates classes and do all kinds of stretches. I do yoga. That's about the extent of it, but this just looks so cool to me. Beautiful nude in pointillism. If you look at it up close, that entire drawing is made entirely out of little tiny dots. I just love that. This beautiful lady on the back. I don't know what this says uh, in... Arabic, but it looks like L-I-O-N, which is cool to me because my father, who I never, sadly never met, um, he was in a band called Lion. So I always think it's kind of cool when I see the word Lion come up. And this beautiful calligraphy paper. She's given me calligraphy papers. A little glue clump I probably got on there. Um, she's given me books of calligraphy paper with this kind of design and it's a really lovely traditional Saudi Arabian calligraphy border very very cool I love that paper what I love about the junk journal craft in general is that it's just such a great way for us to save copies of the things that we treasure right like when I was a kid I used to cherish books of fancy art papers and things like this and sometimes I would not want to use them because they were so pretty that I wanted to save them. If somebody had told me then keep one of each and sew them all together in a new book it would have blown my little mind. I would have done it. I would have loved it but it's better to come late to junk journaling than never, right? Cute little lucky horseshoe. Cute little cupid's arrow with a heart on it. I adore this crocheted piece. This beautiful Saudi woman is actually a magnet. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So cool, May. I just love this. She is just beautiful. Look at her orange nail polish. So yeah, May has made it so that she sits on this page made of my favorite wrapping paper. On the back, she did some really, really fun little markings using calligraphy pens. And look at the ingenious way she has come up with to include some new calligraphy pen nibs. I'm definitely going to have fun with that. And then see how she's demonstrated how they, how they write here? It's just the cutest thing. And the paper this is clipped to, I'm not gonna take off all these paper clips or we'll be here forever but it's one of the cool painted pages that she gave me. This is also great. It's a needle threader <laughs> stapled on. So cool. She's put some embossed paper here. I love the texture of embossed papers. This beautiful, beautiful trim flips up. Love that sort of hot stone massage down the spine look. You know, it's so funny how just folding an edge up and stapling it makes this page look so much more visually interesting and complete than it looked when it was just in there. So cool. A little pocket. What is the opposite of big? Small. <laughs> so cute. Oh, and it's it's a language cards. She has sent me a whole, a whole set of Arabic to English translation cards. And I'm starting to think maybe I should be studying these so that one day when we meet, <laughs> I can say hello <laughs> in Arabic. 
Maybe, you know, I should have done that. Why did these ideas never come to me until I'm flipping through a video? That that's... If you heard that little meow, Domino is wondering why there's tin foil all over the place he loves to jump up here. And the tin foil is there to deter him from jumping up while I film a video. So his little quizzical meow is asking, will you move the tin foil? By the way, okay, so cats hate the way it feels and sounds to step on tin foil. And so, oh, right, I took a thing out of this. This had a beautiful little tie on bracelet and I tied it on and wore it and I forgot to put it back in here. So May, I'm so sorry. Um, I meant to put it back before I did the flip through, but it looked so cute that I actually wore it yesterday. I love, love, love this pen. I'm going to use that. You know, May uses the journals as a great place to put gifts. You know, she loads them up with the coolest pieces of costume jewelry. Like, okay, look at this bib necklace. I'm gonna take this out of the book and actually wear it too, but I'm going to keep it in the book when it's not being worn, just because I like keeping things together in these books. But isn't this cool? Okay, so you know what? This clever kitty, he's not jumping up where he usually does because there's tin foil there. So he found a new route that involves knocking everything down off the counter next to my filming area just so he can give a little cameo appearance. Domino, you trying to say hello to everybody? I'm going to scoop and plop you. Scoop, please unhand, unhand my book. Thank you. Scoop and plop. Something every cat person has to do where you scoop the kitty and plop it back down again in a more convenient place for you. But May, I just love this. It's so cool. This is light as, as um, it's as light as lace, but it looks like, a, when it's tied on, it looks like um, oxidized silver. Just really cool, really cool accessory. And I love the way May has taken extra paper and added it into the book, like this cool crumpled bag that she's painted in the most beautiful shades of blues and teals and golds. This was not in the swap book when I sent it to her. She added that and it's just so cool. That's the belt buckle. It's so much fun. This trim with Arabic script. This looks like a stencil of script. Just super, super cool. How many times in the video am I going to say super cool? I don't know. I was so thrilled. Okay, May, <laughs> the moment I saw these beautiful pages. Um, I'm not gonna pull that out because I think the paint has kind of glued it down, so I don't wanna ruin it, but I adore mermaids and I adored the movie, The Little Mermaid when I was a little girl. And May shared with me photos of this spread as she was making it. It's a decoupaged uh, napkin that she's put these little diamond stickers on. I love seeing how these look. These stickers were one of the Happy Mail gifts I gave to her. I love how she used them. Beautiful pressed flower. So this is a very special item from 1930 which of course will be antique in six years. Beautiful picture. Is that not just the most captivating smile you ever did see? I love this page, May. This is what makes uh, junk journal magic to me. Something like this where you can feel the history of the paper. Imagine the hands that have turned the page in the past. It's like a time capsule. And what May wrote down here, oh, some really pretty, pretty embossed paper, coffee dyed and embossed. She wrote down a wish that when we make our junk journals and we include historic papers such as this, we put notes of the date. And obviously for some, we don't need to do that Case in point, this one here that's clearly uh, dated 1977. But I love this idea, May. So from 
from now on, every time I make a journal, all the historic papers I put in it, I'm going to put a little sticky note with the date. Beautiful nude. I should have given a little warning if anyone is watching this with a little boy who would laugh at boobies. Don't let him look. Too late, I guess. I, I say that because my Auntie Mary Lynn, who's a teacher and who loves junk journals and has watched a lot of my flip throughs, um, there was one, uh, an, an old painting I included in one of my journals and she said the teacher in her gasped and thought, uh oh, can't, we can't let the kids see this because she said all the boys in the class would be giggling. Um, so I, I think it's funny whenever I see a nude work of art in a journal, I think of my, my auntie. <laughs> Speaking of aunts, auntie, this is the only time in my entire life when I have ever actually had my finger on an ant while saying the word auntie, and it was totally by accident. So yeah, my, my aunt, Mary Lynn, who is a human, <laughs> not an, not an insect ant like this little cutie who seems to be carrying a big giant crumb, I love this, me. It's so quirky. It's so fun. I love the little googly eye. <laughs> so sweet. Lots of cool flip outs. Lots of cool things put inside the cool flip outs. Inside is the opposite of outside. You know, I also thought it was kind of a cool opposite um, in this page. The very first time I flipped through this, when I first opened her Happy Mail, I think this was clipped on, like so. And this beautiful woman whose head is veiled, her face is partially covered in this beautiful sheer scarf. It's the opposite of this lady who's completely exposed, hair free, totally nude. I guess she has a little bit of cloth covering uh, her nether regions, but it's kind of funny that the very next word card shows opposites, in and out, inside and outside. Um, and this lady you could say is inside, whereas that lady is outside. I don't know if she did that on purpose or if I'm just looking too much into these little things, but I think it's super cool. I love this bookmark. My absolute favorite colors, blue, turquoise, gold, just so, so much fun. A little collection of buttons going down the side. Some of her absolutely stunning coffee dyed paper. Nobody makes coffee dyed paper quite like May. Every time I flip through her Happy Mail books, I get comments from people admiring her paper, her coffee dyed paper. And you know what? May is so sweet and so generous. I'm sure she wishes she could just teleport piles of the things we love to all of us. I do too, for that matter. You know, I, I, this is just a little random um, aside. Every time I get a big, beautiful package of something like this from May or from my friend Kat um, or the fabrics from Tanya at my jewelry addiction, I always feel like, you know, what did I do to get so lucky? How am I so blessed? How am I so spoiled? How do these wonderful, generous, loving, creative people in the world, you know, what, how, how do I get so blessed to be connected with these wonderful people who send me such wonderful things? And it always makes me think I want to be one of those people who sends people wonderful things too. <laughs> so that's why I sometimes do giveaways and such. Anyway, I would love to do a giveaway right now, but I am so... Um, I almost said swamped or bogged down. I don't want to put a negative connotation to it because it's a very good problem to have. It's a positive thing, but I am, um, my, my time, my dance card is all filled up. <laughs> my time is all being dedicated towards custom orders that I'm working on right now. And I know if I were to do a giveaway, it would just take time away from the stuff I'm supposed to be doing, but trust me. There will be more. This might just be my favorite image. I don't even know. 
what it's representing, but oh, stunning, stunning illustration. I love watercolor and the, the fact that you can see the watercolor artistry here in this, the way it's been done. I love the look on this woman's face. It's oh, just all the character, the side eye she's giving. The triumph in the expression of this beautiful redhead in the center. It's just so cool. It's so 70s too. <laughs> 1977. And then this little family glued to the television and mom with her back on them knitting away, kind of disgusted <laughs> by what they're watching is the vibe I'm getting. It's just so cool, May. I love it so much. Everything she does puts such a big smile on my face. This cool Moroccan tile is a sticker, and I'm I'm in love with that too. They're just such cool things. These little smelly jars. What's funny? These are the kinds of things you see legal because I'm in Canada. Uh, the kinds of things you see marijuana kept in because it hides the smell. <laughs> so cute. More beautiful embossed paper. And just such fun sticky notes. I love these with the Monstera leaves. Absolutely wonderful treasure trove of a swap book. Thank you again, May. I just love that. I wanted to show you quickly some of the other things she sent me too. You know what? I, I, I always share the things that she makes. But I don't share the things that she gives as gifts just because there wouldn't be time in the video and I don't want to be uh one of those you know my, my I'm I'm here to be an artist to share my art and to you know share my passion for all things paper and jewelry and trim and fabric and journals um and I, I don't really want to be an unboxing channel which is why I did it once. I did some unboxings of junk jewelry bags that I bought thrifting just for fun, but my my preference is to do art shares, to share the books I make and to share books that others make, um, Kat and May specifically. Oh, and of course, uh, my dear, dear friend, Magnolia Fairy Tales work. Check out her channel too. Martina made me the most beautiful swap book last year. Um in the style of a lap book that unfolds into all kinds of different surprising twists and turns. Anyway, yeah, so the reason I don't really share all the stuff May gives me is that for one thing, the video would be five hours long. And for another thing, um, I feel like it would set uh, it would set an expectation on my channel that whenever I receive happy mail, I should do an unboxing and go through the whole package on camera, which is just outside of my comfort zone but I do want to mention that her gifts are just dripping with meaning and with personal sentiment and I'm getting a little choked up because they're just so special to me that I can't even believe somebody out there in the world spends so much time and effort and thought to get me things that she knows I'm going to love that, you know, for all intents and purposes, she may never actually see me using and appreciating. So I try to take lots of pictures to share with her so that she can see. But anyway, um, with, with this particular package, she sent, oh, yeah, I can only really describe it as like a shopping spree of amazing vegan cruelty-free makeup from Sephora that we can't get here in Canada. You can only find it in Saudi Arabia. And I'm planning to do my whole face with it. There's highlighters, there's a brow kit, there's stuff for lips, eyes, and cheeks. Um, there's also a little manicure kit. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to do myself up nice for a Valentine's date day with my man Kenley. Um, using all the amazing things she sent. But anyway, I just had to mention that. And I also want to say, opening all of those makeup things, it dawned on me that in one of my uh, 12 days of Christmas videos, just going to set that down while I get chatty here so I can stand a bit more comfy. 
Um, in one of those videos, I had mentioned one of the standout favorite Christmas gifts I ever received was from my grandmom, who had filled a little handbag that she saw me admire with all the different pieces of makeup that I liked in the Avon catalog, which I, I would no longer buy because animal testing, uh, just as an aside there. But at the time I was a kid, I didn't know better. It was the early 90s. I was probably in grade five, first getting into makeup. Um, but I mentioned that when I went through that bag and pulled out piece after eyeliners, lip liners, lipsticks, glosses, shadows, glitters, the works, I just couldn't believe that my grandmom had bought me every single piece of makeup I could possibly want. Um, because typically what we would do, and I'm sorry for the long tangent, but maybe you'll, maybe somebody listening to this will find it relatable. So if you're bored, just skip ahead. <laughs> you're welcome to skip ahead if you're bored. I, I would say people do not watch my videos for a quick glimpse at some junk journals. I think those of you who resonate with my videos, you don't mind a long chatty podcast style discussion. Am I right? I must be right or you wouldn't be here, right? Anyway, long story short. Yeah, okay, so no, long story long. I remember what I was gonna say there. When I was a kid, we didn't have the internet yet. We did, but we didn't know how to use it yet. At least my family didn't. And so we still used the Sears wish book for Christmas time. So my mom would usually pull, bring the Christmas wish book. The day it arrived on our doorstep, she would ha she'd go through it first, I think she'd get first dibs. Um, and then she would hand it to me along with the Sharpie and tell me to circle the things I want and flip over the page. And, you know, there would always be a couple of them under the tree. So that year, when my grandma had handed me the makeup catalog and said, circle the things you like and fold over the page, I did what I would normally do. I circled all the things I like, flipped over the pages of the things I liked, thinking, you know, she'll pick one or two. And I felt kind of guilty when I realized, holy moly, she bought me every single thing that I liked in that book. And when I was opening these beautiful luxury makeup items from May, it just brought back that childhood memory. And I forgot to ask her, so I'm mentioning it in the video now while I'm thinking of it. Did she do that because of what I said in the video about the gift for my grandma? Because if she did, she nailed it. Um, and if she didn't, then just wow, what a cool thing that she did. And it brought back all the joy that I felt when I was a little girl going through those girly, girly things. I think nothing makes us feel more feminine and girly than, you know, jewelry and makeup and pretty papers and fabrics and all those wonderful things. Anyway, May definitely has that spark of divine feminine energy. Such beautiful, like, oh, what she makes, it all smells wonderful. It's like the pages have been soaked in perfume. I love this. I love this. I love a tiny little stapled booklet. I love it. I love that it comes in its own special little package. So cool. Everything she does is so cool. And then, yeah, last but not least, the Valentine. I love this little baggie. I know I'm saying the word love a lot, but... I really do. I really do love this stuff. Look at how there's a little S for Sarah and the little M for May and a little lucky ladybug. I'll wear this as a choker in the summertime. It strikes me as a summertime style, right? Yet one of my New Year's resolutions for 2024 is to be more playful with my style and with my jewelry and not feel like I can only wear the real things. I got so into crystals and gemstones and metal energy for so many years that I kind of made it almost a rule for myself to only wear natural stones because of the healing energies they have. By the way, this was my this was my Christmas bracelet from Kenley. Isn't it pretty? All the different shades of turquoise. It's called African turquoise. A kind of jasper found in Africa that really 
has vibrant turquoise colors to it. But anyway, one of my resolutions is I've got so much really cool costume jewelry. Why not start having fun and wearing more of that too? I, I think I'll always prefer the real thing, but a fun little piece like this tied into a necklace stack, kind of, it's, it's just fun. One of my goals. So look at this adorable little picture, kind of Victorian era with their big hats and their muffs. It's the sweetest little valentine. I forget not to show the private written messages and videos like this sometimes. I love the rose paper. Okay, case in point, how glorious are these earrings that she included here? Are they not just the most fun, bold, oh no! Fun, bold, vibrant, and I broke them, no. I'm sure this comes back on. Oh yeah. So where was this one? Based on that one, it must have been up there. There we go. Phew, I fixed it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to wear these. Wouldn't they look good with the shirt that I'm wearing today, in fact? Black and white. I will, may when I do wear them, I'll send you a picture. I might not be able to wear them for long because they might be heavy, but they're so cool. And speaking of cool, and speaking of summertime, this pen with a little cactus charm. So, my beloved is from, he was born in Phoenix, Arizona in the desert. And, well, not born in the desert, but anyway, born in a hospital, I think. I'll have to clarify that, but up, up close to the desert. And so, cactuses make me think of him and his place of origin. So again, it's like the little things may send. And two of my favorite colors, turquoise and purple. In fact, I'm going to put one of these in each of my purses so that wherever I am, I have a pretty, pretty pen to write with. Thank you, May. So cool. I love this paper. Anyway, yeah, it's like, I find these kinds of synchronicities abound. So, okay, I have to share another cool synchronicity story. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for attending my podcast. Um, so one of the things that May gifted me was a beautiful necklace that says the word love. And it has a stunning ruby in the place of the letter O. And so earlier today, I was looking up the properties of ruby. Um, in one of my crystal books. And in that book, it said that when a person wears ruby, or carries or wears a ruby, it's like the angels of synchronicity know how to find them a little bit more easily. And what a poetic way of saying that the stone attracts synchronicities. So as I was reading this about rubies, I had a video of my friend Tanya playing in the background. Her channel is called My Jewelry Addiction. And if you're into jewelry, it will become a part of your jewelry addiction because watching her is addictive. She has such a cool personality. Um, just like my friend Jason, whose channel is Jason Adams. I found Tanya through him and he started on YouTube because of her. So it's a cool little cycle of YouTube friendships. But anyway, I, I was looking this up and the only piece of jewelry I was wearing was that love necklace. It just felt like the right thing to wear. You know, the, the power of positive labels when we put a word on, I'm like, if, sorry, tangent alert. Um, Dr. Emoto did the water crystal studies where he would drop droplets of water into Petri dishes and then freeze them and then look at them under a microscope to see the growth patterns of the crystals. Pieces, uh, petri dishes with water that had been labeled with negative words wound up forming disjointed, globular, unattractive, asymmetrical, frozen blobs, basically. But the petri dishes that had water droplets that had positive words on them, Words like love, gratitude, happiness, joy, thank you, words like those. Those water drops formed into the most 
gorgeous prismatic crystals imaginable. Like they looked like beautiful works of nature art, like snowflakes. And so when we wear word jewelry, when we wear positive words specifically, I feel like because the human body is mostly made of water, we're basically energizing the water of ourselves to resonate with that frequency. So wearing something that says love is like energizing the water of our bodies with the frequency of love. And that's, that's basically what I've been meditating on today. The frequency of love. Look at all the hearts. This is the most beautiful. Nay, this is the most beautiful Valentine I've ever received in my life. I absolutely will cherish it forever. The ribbon she's tied it with says scented space. That must be a store where she buys her magical perfumes. And these books really are a scented space. When Kenley came home yesterday, he said, ooh, <laughs> I can smell May's perfume. We both love it. Anyway, so I was meditating on the word love, the frequency of love, the power of love, and finding out that rubies attract synchronicities. Literally, as I read that uh, in her video, Tanya stopped for a minute and said, all we need is love. Love is all we need. And she was pointing to her shirt that had the word love embroidered on it. And I just couldn't help but laugh because it's the first time I have ever in my entire life worn anything that has the word love on it, um, which I found kind of significant. And yeah, then Tanya started talking about how she was not. <laughs> She was not, uh, how did she word it? Vibrating with the frequency of love or resonating with the free, something along those lines. Like I wasn't vibrating with the frequency of love, but now I am, so I'm wearing this. And I just couldn't help but laugh at the cosmic play that we are all in. In Sanskrit, they call it the Leela. But there are moments of synchronicity like that in life where, for example, when I was saying the word ant whilst simultaneously touching an ant in the book that she had made or moments like that where I'm contemplating what it means to you know vibrate to the frequency of love and reading about synchronicities and at exactly that moment Tanya talks about wearing the word love and vibrating with it and then just to make it all even more over the top crazy cool the next thing that she held up in her video was a pair of cherub statues that she's going to use to decorate her she shed. And of course, I looked up and saw on the screen angels. And this book said the angels of synchronicity find you more readily when you're wearing ruby. And I thought, wow, like all the symbology. It was one of those moments when it felt like the universe had scripted that moment. Really interesting other tangent here. Later in that video, Tanya picked up a piece that she said she found in an antique store that when she picked it up, she kind of lifted it close to look to see what it said. And what it said inside the enamel was once in a blue moon. While at that exact moment, the song Blue Moon started to play on the radio. And she said it was one of those moments, like, what are the chances? She's holding this thing, reading the words blue moon, just as the speaker starts to play blue moon. So anyway, I love a good synchronicity. I, I'm a sucker for a synchronicity story. And I thought, what are the chances that while I'm watching her video, getting a synchronicity about the word love, she, in that same video, shares a synchronicity story that she had about a blue moon. And I had already thought I'd love to tell that story in a video. We'll see if it comes up organically someday. And today it did because I had the significant, uh, the synchronicity of the ant <laughs> with the word ant. So anyway, it's just so cool. May, your packages are always filled with magic and filled with beauty and filled with symbolic meaning. And I can't even put into words how grateful I am. Um, this fabric, just my favorite colors of all time, that light turquoise and gold. And she spoiled me. She sent enough of this that I'm definitely going to make myself a journal out of it. I'm thinking the, the front will be 
uh, the blue with the gold medallions and the back will be the gold with the blue medallions. I love that both sides are equally gorgeous. Anyway, before I ramble on any more than I need to, I'll say thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this flip through video. I hope, you know what, if you have a cool synchronicity story, let me know in a comment. I would love to read about it. And, you know, maybe I'll do a synchronicity themed journal one day and read those comments while I do the flip through. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but either way, whether I make that journal or not, I would love to hear about your synchronicities. I hope you have a magical, blessed, love-filled Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for watching. Happy crafting. So much love to you. Bye for now.